Hello everyone, welcome back to another Doodlet video. Hope you're all doing okay. Um, today, because it is Chinese New Year on the 12th of February, I thought we'd make a Chinese inspired picture. Now the actual animal for Chinese New Year this year is it's Year of the Ox. But I really, really, really love pandas. So I thought it would be nice to do something to do with a picture of a panda. The giant panda is in fact the animal, the national animal of China. So there is a relation there. We're not doing a picture of an ox for Chinese New Year. We're going to do a picture of a panda. So I'm also going to use some other bits of um, Chinese work that the doodlers who have been to my studio in the past two, two years will recognize some parts of it. Um, but I know that it was really, really enjoyed. So I thought it'd be fun to use it in this picture as well. So I'm going to find my screen, my sharing my screen over here. That's going to pop up and I'm going to be sharing that part with you just very quickly sharing. Okay. Mm. Share. Okay. Hopefully that's, you can see that now. We're going to go over here and we're going to do from the beginning. Right. So year of the ox, Chinese new year. And as I said, we're not making a picture of an ox. I mean, you can, if you want to, that's fine. Use the other elements that I'm going to show you and incorporate a picture of an ox. Um, but I'm going to talk you through how I drew a picture of a panda. So to start off with, just a piece of A4 paper or card, again, white. White is a good color because that's the main color of a panda. Um, you can, of course, make your panda any color you want, orange or yellow, whatever, a rainbow panda, that would be exciting. So you need to draw a nice big circle in your paper. Doesn't matter if it's wherever it is on your paper, it's fine. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just a nice big circle, start off with a circle. Then you need to draw going halfway down the middle. Where's my mouse? Halfway down the middle that way and halfway down the middle that way. So going down and then across as well. Do um, break up at the lines with a cross. If you can make your cross a little bit bendy, like it is in the picture, then it'll make your panda look a little bit not so that it's straight on, it'll make it look like it's a bit from the side. But you can do however you want, but it just breaks it up to make it easy to put in, put in the next bits, which is a nice big circle to fill up from your halfway line to the bottom of the circle, draw another circle. So now you've got a circle inside a circle. And then at the top of the head of the circle, you're going to do two half circles. Yes, those are going to be the two ears. So you've got a big circle with a little circle inside it and two half circles on top for the ears. So now you can see it's already starting to look like a panda or a bear at least. So now on the, the, the line that you've drawn going across your circle, you're going to do two eyes. Whereabouts do you think the eyes should go? I reckon they're about halfway so that they fall above where that circle is that you drew at the bottom, they're going to fall sort of on the sides of that, but up higher. And that circle we drew to start with inside the big circle is going to turn into its nose. So what you need to do is just draw a little chin sort of area, break up that one circle with a line and then draw a nose in and then underneath that it's going to be the chin part of your of your panda. So now you've got the mouth, nose area, and eyes and ears. You've got all the features you need for your panda. So now the main focus of the eyes of a panda are the big black parts around the eyes. So you can decide how big or small you want to make these. I've made mine quite a medium size. They're kind of like a squashed oval size. So they're going around the circle of where you put your eye. So there's my one eye and my other eye, and then I've drawn a shape around it. So then you know where you're going to add in the black. And you can see inside the ears, I've drawn in some curly bits so we can do some shape inside the ears. And there's your picture of your panda. That's all six steps I've just taken to show you all together. So if it's easier than looking through those slides, you can see it all together in those six stages on that one slide there. 
just working from the top across and then going from there across to make your panda in your pencil. Now, the next thing that you need to focus on is making your, your panda furry because they're quite fluffy furry creatures. And to do that around the, the edges of where the fur is, you're going to be making little lines and you can make these very messy. You can be neat and tidy. It depends what your style is. But if you, instead of having a smooth line like you have over here, go over your line with the little jagged short lines to make it look furry. And you can see very quickly, you'll turn your smooth lined panda into a fluffy furry panda. You carry on working like that, go around all the shapes. I added in some yellow here, just to give it a little bit of difference. Um, just a very light coloring. You don't have to do that. You can add in some pale brown if you want to, or just keep it black and white. It's entirely up to you. As I said earlier, start to make it a bit rainbow. Totally your choice because it's your creation. So then the panda will start to make, make some more life into your panda. Now what I've added here, because the other work has all been done with color pencil, is I've used a fine black pen, any kind of black pen, a fine liner or a ballpoint, um, just a black pen to go around in the ears over here to add in some dark areas. So you can add, start to show some definition in your, in your panda drawing. It's nice to have contrast to show more areas of definition here. And you can see it's gone underneath the, the, the panda eye, inside the nose, the really dark areas, inside the nostrils of the panda, and just below in the fur, the pupils of the eyes, the little dark dots inside your eyes. Just a few areas, but just to give it that bit of interest. Here's a very close up, I, I zoomed into my photograph of the ear. So you can see how it's really quite messy as well because it's quite furry. You don't have to be very, very precise. You can go messy and, and do it very sketchy. It'll have a nice effect if you do that. And then this, I think, yes, that's the center of the eye. Just showing that I've also left, just to give it some life, eyes of animals always look nice if you um, leave a bit of white. It just brings your the eye of the animal to life. If you can remember to leave a white area in your drawing, that will make the eyes pop and look really good. So there are the four stages going from the beginning of making it furry to adding in some color if you want, adding in your black pen. And that's my final drawing of the panda down here. You can see there's shaded areas to make the nose and around the nose here, just to try and give it some shape, some little fine whiskers coming off the top of the eyes. But that's essentially your four basic steps to make your, your panda. There's a lot of area that's white, so you can do a, a little bit of work to make quite an effective drawing of a panda. There it is, nice big size of the final panda of the drawing for you to see. So then the next step that I did, because I wanted to just make a picture using different, different elements, is I found, I was lucky to find this nice big piece of green card and I had some black paint with a paintbrush that's quite flat, this paintbrush. It's got a flat square edge. And to, this is what I used to make a picture, a painting of bamboo. Um, now you can, if you don't have paint um, or the flat paintbrush, you can do this in just drawing with, with pens, Sharpies, pencil crowns, you can make it a bamboo effect. But I just wanted to bring this in because I've, I've used it before and it's it looks very effective and it's actually quite simple to use your flat brush, dip it into your black paint and put it down. And as you put it down, squash it into the paper, not too much, but a little bit. And then as you drag it up your paper a little bit, take it off your paper a little bit. So don't press so hard. And then when you get to the bottom of your shape, um, these edges, you press down again and what happens is you get a squashed edge and then a slightly thinner edge and then a squashed edge again and then you lift your paintbrush off the paper and then pick it up and leave this gap and then you start again put your paintbrush down press a little bit harder don't press so hard and then press a little bit harder and you'll find you start to make these segments of the bamboo and you can do that as many times as you want as i got to the top here 
I didn't press it down again. I just sort of lifted my paintbrush off to get this pointy edge. And then you get a bamboo, piece of bamboo that's going along. And then of course I've drawn what painted in some, um, some leaves. And I've also managed to go to the next slide very quickly. <laughs> okay. So what we've used this in the club before and the doodlers absolutely loved it. This is not the actual Chinese alphabet. I have to stress that because there were members of my family that were um, criticizing it's not the proper one. No, it's not because that's way too difficult. So this is a simplified Chinese alphabet that you can use the letters and you can make your name or um, I chose to write something different in, in my final picture, but you can see every symbol that's on there will have the corresponding English alphabets. You've got all the way through from A down to Z and you can find the letter that you want and then use their version of the Chinese alphabet. And I use this to put onto my picture, which is showing up now, underneath my panda. So I think you can see, because the simplified alphabet's quite simple, um, that I've written the word panda underneath my panda with my bamboo on the left. And that's now a simple Chinese picture to celebrate the fact that it's Chinese New Year on the 12th of February. So I hope you all liked watching that video. Um, I'll show you my picture here. That's how big it turned out because the panda was drawn on a piece of A4 paper and I used almost the whole size of the A4 paper. Um, cut, cut it out carefully around the edge and then stuck it on this big piece of green card. You can use whatever you like. You can use have white card again or you could even use a piece of black card and do your bamboo in, in green. Um, this is just what I happen to find in the studio because I'm lucky I've got lots of materials here. And that's my, my panda picture for Chinese New Year. So I hope you all enjoyed that. And I hope you would like to go off and make a Chinese picture and have as much fun making yours as I did making mine. I would really love, I love seeing your work. If you can get your parents or a grown up to send me a picture, that would be fabulous. I love seeing them. And I hope you all take care and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.